everyone, it's Adriana with Adriana's Paper Crafts, and I'm here with another Photoshop tutorial. Really, this Photoshop tutorial should have been first, but I think I got a little bit excited and I just kind of jumped right into things as far as like making uh, chip bags and different party favors and such. So this one is going to be a very basic Photoshop tutorial. Um, if this is the first Photoshop tutorial that you're watching of mine, this will give you a much more basic understanding of how Photoshop works, of what tools are available to you. And then from there, you can jump over to my other Photoshop tutorials and start practicing making different party favors. Um, if you need to know which Photoshop version I have, I finally found out because someone had asked me before and I did not know how to find that out. Um, I am currently using Photoshop CC. That is... Um, Creative something, Creative Cloud, I believe it is, and um, it is a 2019 version of Photoshop. Uh, the Photoshop Creative Cloud is similar to Photoshop CS in that it allows you to pay for the subscription on a monthly basis versus having to pay for it in a yearly basis. So I currently pay about $10.85, I think it is, per month for my Photoshop. So if you think that that's an expense that you're willing to take on, that way you can practice and then start using Photoshop, I highly recommend it. I really don't like using anything else besides Photoshop. So um, today, like I said, we're just going to go over basics. I'm going to show you guys the different tools that, will, that are available to you on Photoshop. Now, my Photoshop is gray, as you can see, but that is because I changed the settings. I believe that when I first downloaded Photoshop and I first opened it up it was a very very light color um, you can also change your settings to where it's all black but this one to me was just more visually um, better for me it created less eye strain I do stare at the screen a lot and I cannot stand the super bright or the super dark color this one was a happy medium so if your Photoshop looks different it's just because of that I just changed the settings of how light or dark my screen is so now this is what Photoshop looks like with an empty canvas. So your canvas space is here in the middle. However, if you click on this little house button over here, this is normally what pops up every time I open up Photoshop. All it's doing is showing me my recent projects. So I'm going to click on this little Photoshop icon and it brings me to my empty screen. And this is all we're really going to focus on today. That way we can look at all the different tools it has. Now on the very top up here are your different menu options. You're going to have basic stuff like file, edit, image, layer, type, select, filter, 3D, view, window, and help. If you've ever used um, Microsoft Word or Publisher or even an Excel spreadsheet, all of your programs have those options at the top. It's the same thing. So let's go through file. We're just going to do it pretty quickly because, of course, it's very basic stuff that you would expect to find under this menu option. File, of course, is where you're going to open up a new document. You're going to open up an old project you had. You're going to save, um, things like that. Edit is going to focus on the specific item that you have selected, the specific layer that you have selected. You would then edit using the edit option. Image is another thing. Image is going to give you really, really cool options. I actually use this image menu a lot. Um, right now, of course, it's all grayed out because I don't have anything selected on my canvas, but we can try and check some items out if you want. Um, this lets you adjust the color of your items. It lets you adjust um, the rotation of it if you want it to be upside down or right side up. Layer is also a really good one because with Photoshop, everything is in layers. So there's a layers panel. Type is for that. It's for your type, your fonts, your words, your text. Select is just very simple. You know, select this, select that, deselect it, you know, let it go. Filter, I don't use too much. Um, if you are going to be using Photoshop to edit maybe professional photos, you'll be using this a lot, but I do not. Um, I create specific images, I don't edit images. 3D is to create 3D items that is much more, um, it requires a higher skill level, so I wouldn't want you playing around with that unless you kind of already know what you're doing. View, of course, is just how to view your canvas, and then window and help are just additional 
extra things that you will never really focus on. On your left hand side over here are your different tools. This right here is what you see a lot of on certain tutorial videos for Photoshop. The main ones that people use are, of course, this main move tool. It just allows you to grab onto something and move it around. A lot of people use this magic wand tool. The magic wand is how you remove that um, background color. Maybe you want to remove the white around a picture. That's how you do that. You've got the crop button. You've got your eyedrop tool. That's to select a specific color. Um, right now, I'm just going through the main popular ones. Of course, if you were to use Photoshop, you could go through each one specifically and mess around with it and find out exactly what they do. You've got the eraser tool to, again, erase things. One that I also use a lot is the um, text tool down here. This shapes one here. If you click the tiny little black arrow down here, it opens up other shape options. And the magnifying glass to zoom in and out. So again, it has more than that, but I just want to give you some of the highlight the, the really important ones that people really seem to use a lot. That's all stuff on your left-hand side. Over here on your right-hand side, you've got your color and your swatches boxes. This is just a quick way of selecting a different color. Down here, this is very important when this ever disappears, because I've had a couple times where I don't know if I hit something, and this properties and adjust, adjustments boxes, they just disappeared and I was freaking out. I, I use them a lot. So the properties, what that's going to do is display the properties of the um, project that you currently have up on your screen. So it's going to tell you what the size of the item that you have selected is. And I work a lot with sizes. I want to be very precise in my sizes. And so I need this property screen up at all times. Adjustments is going to allow you to adjust the colors, the hue, how much lighting or how dark your photo is. I use this a lot to change the vibrancy of everything. So if your colors are coming out really dull, you would come to this adjustment section and you would adjust the vibrancy or the saturation of everything. And then down here is your layers panel. This is where all of the different layers of your image are going to be. You've got channels and you've got paths. Those again are not basic. Those are gonna be things that you would start to mess with once you know a little bit more about Photoshop. And then down here, again, right now it's grayed out because we don't have anything selected. But you've got your FX button. FX is just that. It's going to add an effect to your photo, such as an outline around the photo or around your text. It's going to allow you to do drop shadows, maybe gradients, maybe fill a shape with a pattern. So all of this here, you, I, I will always have up because I use it a lot. But if you click this little two arrows right here, it will open up an additional panel. Up here is your history, which right now is blank because we have not done anything. And down here is your character box. That's um, if you were typing in something and let's say you want it to be italicized, you would open up your text over here, your little text box, and you would click the italic option. So that's not, that is not going to be available to you solely through the properties box. You would have to open up your text box to get more of that. I don't really mess with my text too much. Usually I like the way it comes out naturally, so I don't mess with this too much. I'm going to go ahead and hide that again and we're going to open up a new image you're going to go over to file you're going to click new what it's going to do is ask you what size do you want your image to be and what quality do you want it to be so i'm going to go with a basic eight and a half by 11 inch um, canvas so it's right here you can also select if you want to open it up using pixels centimeters points so forth you can go ahead and retitle it. So we'll do example. I'm going to title my project as example. It'll allow you to choose your orientation. Do you want it to be right side up or do you want it to be going sideways? Resolution is the pixels per inch. I always set it to 300. That is just a pretty average or high quality actually. But if you're not worried about anything high quality and you want the system to move faster, you would set this to something like 72 or 96. Everything else I leave the same. I don't like to mess with it because, again, that is not something for, for um, newcomers to Photoshop. That's something that you would mess with if you're a little bit more advanced than Photoshop. So from there, once I'm okay with what I have, I'm going to go ahead and click Create. And it's going to open that up for me. 
Okay, so I say let's go ahead and enter in a shape so you can see what we would do. You would come over to your left hand side where your tools are. You would click on this rectangle option on the little, there you go, the little arrow down there. Let's open up a polygon tool. We'll click the polygon. Now when you click it, before you even do anything, what happens is that up here at the top underneath your menu, different options are then available to you that were not available before you selected that shape tool. So from here you can change the fill color. So let's just do this like magenta looking color. You can add a stroke to it, which is the outline around that shape. I'm going to just do black so it's very obvious. You can change the thickness of it. That one, it um, I would say to draw your shape first and then go back and adjust the thickness of it. You can change if you want the line to be a plain line. Do you want it to be dashes? Do you want it to be dots? Let's do dashes. All right. And then right here it says sides. All right, so right now, because it has three sides, it should draw a triangle for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place that there. You can see it's a little bit off my page, but it has that fill color we requested. It has the black outline, and the outline is dashes instead of a regular line because that's what I selected. Now, in order to grab it, you have to switch back to your move tool. If you don't select that move tool, it will not allow you to grab it because you're still technically using your shape tool. So let's go ahead and use the move tool. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to move it over so that you can see it better. All right. Now over here under your properties tab, it does not have the size currently listed. So what I'm going to do is just click right off of my page and click back on the shape. Sometimes it does give you the sizes. Sometimes it doesn't. I'm not going to lie. I still have not really figured out the little details on that, why it does that sometimes with my shapes. But for right now, we're not going to stress out about it. Now, if you, let's say, created this triangle and you're just not happy with it, maybe you're not happy with how thick those uh, black little dashes are, what you're going to do is click on your shape tool again. Now, don't click anything else. Now that you've clicked your shape tool again, these options at the top are back up. That means you can then mess with it again. So let's say I, instead of these dashes, I want to do dots. And then let's say I want it to be much thicker. And then let's say we're going to change the color of this inside, this fill color, to yellow. All right. And again, if I want to move it around, I have to select my move tool. So you're going to come up to that move tool. If you hover over any of these menu options, or these tool options, it will name for you what it is. So I'm solely hovering over the move tool and it's telling me it's called the move tool. All right, so I'm going to move that down here. I'm going to show you guys how to make a star. Go ahead and click on your, sh your uh, shape tool again. Make sure you are selecting the polygon tool. Now, again, your little options have popped up up here. Under sides, you're going to type in however many sides a star has, which is what? I have no idea, five. <laughs> and then you just go ahead and type in your enter button. Oh, no, sorry, that's a polygon. I don't know what I'm doing, guys. Is it a is it six for a star? Let me see. No, that's a hexagon, isn't it? Actually, sorry, what we're doing... For a star, I know how to do it. I promise I do. Here we go. You're going to click on this little path options here. It looks like a gear. You're going to come down and you're going to hit star. All right. And now your star is going to have however many sides you just put in. So let's do five again, not six. And there you go. You've got a normal looking star. However, if you wanted to do a different shape star, you would go ahead and continue to enter in more sizes. I mean, sorry, more sides. And now it looks like that. I'm going to add one more seven sides. Looks like that. So four sides. So again, you can get different shape stars 
by just adjusting the amount of sides it has. So let's do one more regular star so you can again see how to do that. You're going to click on your shapes tool, make sure your polygon tools are selected. You're going to change your sides to five to make a regular shaped star. Then you're going to select this little gear option right up at the top. And you're going to make sure that star is selected. If you want smooth corners, you can do that. You can go ahead and check that. And then just simply come down to your page and drag it out. Now it looks like a little baby star. How cute. I've never actually made one of those. <laughs> and like I said, if you want to go ahead and change the outline, you would just come up here and you would change your settings. All right, and then to move it, you would click your move tool and then you'll drag it to wherever you want. Now let's say you want to enter in the baby's initials in there. You would click your text tool over here. Go ahead and click wherever you want that text to go. And then simply start typing. So let's say the baby's initials are A and J. So what you're going to do is type it in. Now again, right now, your text tool is selected. So if you try to move that text, it isn't going to go anywhere. You have to then go and click that move tool. So click your move tool. It is now movable. So you're going to drag it to the correct position that you want it to be in. And then if you want to make it bigger, you then drag it and make it bigger. All right, so let's say that's where you want, want it to go, but you want to change the color of the text. You're going to come over to your right hand side of the screen where it says properties. It is now listing for you the font that you're currently using, whether it's bold or it's anything else. It's going to give you the size. It's going to give you the spacing number between. If you have, for example, different sentences, it's going to show you the spacing between those sentences and then the spacing between letters as well as the specific color. And if you want it to be centered to the left or to the right. Now, in order to mess with any of these settings, you have to come back and click on your layer. So just click that layer one time. I'm going to come down and click look the layer. Now these options are available to me. So I'm going to show you this is where you select your font size. You can also just type it in. So I'm going to put 90. I'm going to change the spacing. It's a little too close for me. So you can mess around with that. And then since I do not have multiple lines, I do not need to mess with this option here, which is just the line spacing. But I do want to change the color. So let's click on this color box. And then from there, you can then drag it. And it will update as it goes. As you can see over here, it is updating that color. All right, come over here, mess with this little slide option. You can make it brighter or darker. If you want it to match a color that you already have on your screen, what you'll do is just select this little tiny color box here. And it is going, if you see on the screen, I know it's really small, but now it's giving you the eyedrop tool. And the eyedrop tool allows you to select a color anywhere on your screen. So I'm going to select this blue that I have for the outline. And there you go. It instantly changes what you have selected, which is the text. So I'm okay with that. So what I'm going to do then is click OK. However, I want to add an outline to these letters. So what I'm going to do is come down all the way at the bottom of the screen underneath my layers panel and click this FX button. Once you click that, it then opens up a menu of options. So it will take a little bit of time for you to learn the terminology. However, um, stroke, I have mentioned it a lot in my videos, so hopefully you know what a stroke is by now, but that's what I want. I want an outline around my letters so that they really pop. So I'm going to click stroke and then a new little tab will open for you. You can then change the size of it. So we're going to mess with that. You're going to see if you're looking at it, changing the size. Right now, the position is in the center, so I'm going to change that to the outside of the letters. You could even change it to go on the inside of the letters. I'm going to put it back on outside. 
You can change the opacity so that you can barely see it. Or it's all the way visible. The fill type, you can also change it. You, it could be a color. It could be a gradient, which if you don't know what a gradient is, it is just a blend of colors. So the gradient, for example, would be between white and black. The gradient would be that gray that's in the middle of the white and black. So you could change it to gradient, or my favorite part is you can even change it to a pattern. A pattern and how to do that, I will do in another video, and I will try to link it if I have it once I do this video. For now, we're just going to stick with the color, and I want to do something still along that blue. So I'm going to come over here and mess around with that. And then just play around with it. I like this color, but I do want the lines to be a little bit thicker, so I'm going to adjust that. All right, and then once you're done, you click OK. Now, I also want to add a drop shadow to it. So you're going to make sure that that layer is selected, which is my text. I'm going to come back down to FX, and this time, click Drop Shadow. So a drop shadow is just that. It is a shadow that is going to give it some depth. A lot of the times, if you print something and you're just not happy with the way it looks, it's usually because there's just not really anything making it pop. So drop shadows and, and beveling and embossing is going to help you do that. So I'm going to make sure my opacity is at 100. The distance is how far that shadow is, so you can see there. The spread, of course, is just how big that is. Spread usually shows more once you've adjusted the size, which is the next option. So you can see the spread there. So my size is here. And the noise just kind of basically does just that. It gives it noise. And of course, if you want to change the color so that it's not so dark, you can do that. You can change it to any color you want it to be. All right, and that is a drop shadow. So those are very, very basic tools for Photoshop. But the fact is, is that it makes it so easy. It's so fast. It's very intuitive. I don't like that in Cricut Design Space, you can't do drop shadows. Um, it's just really difficult to work with. I've used it for years. But the second that I get into Photoshop, it's like that in order for me to finish a project, whereas in InDesign, it takes so long. You can do drop shadows and um, and strokes and all that in Publisher and in Microsoft Word. But again, it's just, I don't like it. It's just such an outdated feel to me. Um, it's not very intuitive, whereas Photoshop is. It just, it's very a natural feel to it. So, um, but you know, just do what, use whatever you're going to use, whatever's best for you, but also what's best for your budget. But if you're planning to one day start paying for Photoshop or at least start experimenting with it, um, you know, hopefully you you watch these videos and you actually gain some kind of knowledge from it. If there's anything else that I can help you with, you guys just drop a comment down below. Um, if you are not already, be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. It's Adriana's Paper Crafts. And then if you want free templates, more one-on-one -on -one advice, definitely join my Facebook group. It's Adriana's Paper Crafts group. Um, I have a lot of free stuff on there, and I comment there, like, on the daily. So if you need anything, if you found my Facebook from YouTube, be sure to let me know. And, um, yeah, I will continue to post more Photoshop tutorials for you guys. Um, I do apologize if this was really long. <laughs> but like I said, if there's any questions you guys have, um, go ahead and comment down below, and I will see you around next time, okay? Bye!